Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Thanks for being with me here today as we talk about Express success. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means, but first of all, I want to thank you for being here with us today. I'm so grateful for every moment that we get to spend together to learn more about living as a thriving entrepreneur, to look into the whole concept of, you know, what does it really mean? Do we, um, if we have a regular job, does that mean we're not thriving entrepreneurs? Or can we be a thriving entrepreneur even when we're just thriving in running the business of our life. And a lot of times that is the most thriving of all entrepreneurships is being the CEO of you and really getting things done powerfully and effectively in a way that makes the difference that only you can make. As you move forward, you live, you love, and you thrive in everything you do. You know, there is express lanes and there are slow lanes. And anybody that tells you that there's too much of a fast track to success is probably, uh, you know, they're probably telling you a story. But there is some ways that you can find express success. What does that mean? It means that there are things that you can do that you can build the ecosystems that allow a culture and an environment of fast growth and moving at a expressed or express pace. Um, There are things that you can do to speed up your college. There are things you can do to take normal events in your life and make them go faster. And then of course there is just plain out systems and plans that you can have in place so that you can really truly express. You can be on the express train to success. And so today we want to talk about express success. We want to look at what are some of the ways that we can, uh, you know, expedite. We can move forward in a more powerful, uh, and I almost want to say more better way. I know that's horrible English. But in a way that really gets us to where we really want to go to begin with. um, In a way that is powerful, is effective, and really truly moves us forward to where we want to go in the best uh, way that's possible for us, but also in a way that is, um, you know, is good for the world, the environment, those that we live in. You know, I mean, we don't want to be so much on the success express or what a friend of mine used to call the stress express that, um, that we abandon the people in our lives, that we hurt those that we love, that we um, destroy the important relationships in our life. We want to be on the express success train, but we want to also be kind and loving and the wonderful human being that I know each of you are when you're listening to this. So as we go through with these three great guests, I hope that you will catch some examples, some stories, and some concepts of some things that you can do in your life or in the lives of your children or other people in your life to help them move in a direction of success and that they can maybe even have express success. With that said, let's learn how to be a thriving entrepreneur as we talk to our first guest. Join me in welcoming Jeff Amrine. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing today? Oh, really good. Glad to be here, Steve. So good to have you with us. First off, tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Yeah, well, I you know, I guess I'm a serial entrepreneur by affliction. Uh, nine startups over a, a long career, three Fortune 500s along the way, and 10 years in the military. I was a Naval Academy grad and spent actually spent six and a half years in the Air Force Spent seven years at the University of Arkansas running their technology commercialization function. And the last 15 years running a, a company called uh, Startup Junkie Primary, primarily, which is an entrepreneurial support organization that helps 
a couple thousand entrepreneurs every year down the pathway from, you know, concept or wherever they are to uh, the next step with their company. So how do we, I mean, you kind of help people do this, but help me walk through the concept of how do you know what the next step for your company is? Sure. Good question. It's, it's a, a process of self-discovery where our approach is, is very Socratic. I, I would say that if anything, we sort of illuminate the pathway that only the entrepreneur can walk down. So part of that is giving them some tools. So for example, if they're at concept stage and they, they've got an idea or they see an unmet need, we'll take them through a, a lean startup, lean canvas and customer discovery process. And that tends to, if they if they can put themselves in a frame of mind to be a consultant to their own idea, that gives them primary market data that tells them, is there really demand here? Is there a possibility of product market fit? Is this something I should pursue? And the whole theory there is, is getting the information before you go off and build something that people may not want to buy. And so that's for very early, that's part of what we do. For later, it's more of a triage process where we find out what's keeping them up at night. We ask them really good questions and we'll either have tools that can help them get to that next step or we'll have connections within the network that may address some specific pain point or need. If they don't really already have a well-articulated vision and a good mission figured out, they don't have core values, they haven't thought a lot about their culture, we can take them through a bit of a lightweight strategic planning process as well and make sure that they've got some of those answers so they actually have a North Star for the business and something to aim at. I love that phrase, a North Star for your business. So uh, talk to me a little bit about where people come to you at. Do they, um, are they just like massively confused at the time that they get there or do they kind of have an idea and need to just kind of help them in, help them hone it in or where are people usually when you start with them? It, it's it's everything you can imagine. Uh, some people will come there and it, it, you can just imagine if, if you think across a, a, a sample size of a couple of thousand entrepreneurs, which is what we deal with. Some will come in and they'll have what seems like really intractable problems. There'll be a high degree of confusion. They won't know where to go next. Some might be very laser sighted on, you know, we just need to understand how to do a better job with customer acquisition, or we know we need to fill this critical role. How should we go about that? Or we're thinking about a licensing strategy for our product or our intellectual property, what should we do? And, and, and we act as that sounding board. I won't sit here and say the 30 something folks that we have on the team have every answer, but we have a ton of resources. So we know the right questions to ask. And once we do a little bit of that triage, we can tend to point them in the right direction and give them some pretty good guidance. If we can't help them, we know someone who can. So what do you think um, I mean, usually it ends up starting off with mindset. Do, do you find too that most of the time it's what the person is thinking they can or can't do, and that's pretty much where the issue at least begins? Yeah, uh, you, you know, it's it's like it's like we used to say when I, when I was in the military. Sometimes it's a cockpit problem, or it's a you know pilot error or whatever. Uh, there, there's there's something to that, and and part of it is. The entrepreneurs that ultimately get through this are not the ones that take ridiculous risk or are completely fearless, but they're resilient enough to realize it's going to be a difficult, bumpy process. And if you just keep grinding through it, if you become a student of the industry you're in, if you surround yourself with good people and build a good team, if you're not afraid of mentorship and coaching, if you're not afraid to admit you don't know something, you'll get through it. And, and I think that's Mindset is a big part of it. Entrepreneurial mindset in general, whether you're starting trying to create a new uh, venture or whether you're trying to create a new product or service in a big company, from my point of view, it is a mindset where you say, I'm dissatisfied with the status quo and I'm going to work really hard to figure out how this can be done better. And that kind of mindset, I think, is invaluable, uh, truthfully. But it, you're right. Mindset's a big part of it. So walk us through kind of the basic process of getting started with you. 
um, what does a person need to know or, you know, where do they need to be to be able to say, hey, Jeff, let's jump in on this and and really get things organized? Yeah, yeah. And the way it typically kicks off is we, we do a fair amount of, of uh, I guess, social promotion through all channels. So the brand is fairly well known in the central U.S. And we, we've got a, a, a podcast also that's fairly well followed called the Startup Junkies podcast. So the, the brand has been out there now long enough that people one way or another, either through a referral or through the website or through an event, we put on about 250 events a year and run a couple of accelerators, they will have heard about us or they will have talked to somebody else that's been a client. And what they'll do first is go out to the site and they we've got a, a Calendly link that goes back to what we call our master tracker. That's how people are onboarded. Once they come on board, we, we get a bunch of information about where they are with the business uh, what their concerns are, what they'd like to talk about. It kind of automatically schedules a calendar event, which can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 50 minutes. We'll have that initial exploratory discussion. We go through triage. We listen more than we talk. Based on what we find, then we can be a little bit prescriptive about next steps. Here are some things that you should think about. These are some things that you should do. Here's some tools. Here's some follow-up contacts. And after, sometimes it's fairly intensive on the front end, depending upon where they are in the process and the number of meetings we have. And then in some ways we become like a doctor's office. They can come back to us two months later, three months later, once they finish some of the homework we've given them, six months later, wh whatever the case may be. And the, the one thing I should say about the business model is we're third party funded by large organizations like uh, the US SBA. We run some of their regional innovation clusters, the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, uh, the Walton Family Foundation and others. So all of our services are completely free. There's never a charge to our startup and small business clients. Oh, wow. That's that's kind of amazing. So um, where do you draw the line for when a person is a startup business and when they're not to be able to qualify? Yeah, it's a good question. So from pre-revenue all the way through probably 15 or 20 million in sales. Uh, we, we've we've had taken people in that are that far along. They have something they want to go through or some help that we can provide. Past that, we have a another practice area that we call Innovation Junkie that works with emerging, uh, I would say, uh, small businesses that are beyond that revenue range I just described up to the Fortune One size. And we've had clients everywhere in between. But for the very small entrepreneurs, yeah, it's it's always free. They get up to that. 15 or $20 million uh, revenue level, and then they kind of graduate out. But otherwise, we'll, we'll work up, work them all the way along. They never really graduate out of support from us other than the revenue part of it. Wow, that's really amazing. So, I mean, with a program that cool, um, I mean, I'm thinking about my own business. I'm like, hey, can I qualify for that? I mean, even though we've been in business forever, but um, I mean, why... What are the things that keep people from doing it? Well, I, I, I guess it's a good question. Sometimes people, I would say sometimes people kind of stay inside their own head or they're afraid to ask the question or they might be too prideful to reach out for help. Or even though we do a great job promoting it, they're just not aware. And And we do tend to be pretty regionally focused, even though we've run programs in South Korea and we've had a number of different programs and events that we've run in Canada and other geographies, mostly people are going to know us within Arkansas, within the Midwest, et cetera. Uh, and so I guess part of it is just a lack of awareness, you know, that we're here, even though we do a pretty solid job promoting it. And, and then maybe some pride issues, people not wanting to ask for help or being concerned or not believing maybe right off the bat that there's no fine print or no charge or no fees or no equity tangles. And there's none of that. You know, I, I joke, it's an unsustainable business model we've sustained for 15 years by virtue of being able to deliver good measurable outcomes that are meaningful to uh, the funders that we have. Well, like you said, I am um, thinking about my own company now. I'm like, okay, Jeff, help me. <laughs> I mean, give us a shout. Know. We're happy to help. That's what we're here for. I love that. So, um, are there any people other than the revenue thing we talked about? Are there any folks that you kind of don't work with? 
Uh, you know, as long as it's a small business or or a startup, um, there's there's no there's nothing I can really think of that we would exclude. If somebody needs help and they call, in fact, one of the ways that we rationalize working with people that are out of state or distant is they have something that we think will be of interest to one of the large enterprises in our region. So you can think Walmart, J.B. Hunt, Tyson Foods, and then the sort of supplier community that's around them. We'll definitely take those calls uh, because part of what we're supposed to do under our Small Business Administration Regional Innovation Cluster work is make those large businesses stronger by exposing them to startups and small businesses they might not otherwise see. So there, there's not, I mean, unless they're just bad actors or, or you know, uh, people that are not trustworthy or, you know, have nefarious motives, we'll work with just about anybody. So talk to us a little bit more about um, how people can get in contact with you. Yeah, the best way to find us is to go to startupjunkie.org. That's the website. And that, that also has links to all the services, um, all the programs that we run. It, it identifies all the events. It's got links to the podcast. They can follow us on on all the, the usual suspect uh, social media uh, outlets, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, we're on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, that, that's probably the best way. Uh, the best way is just if you have an issue, reach out to us. And there's links on the on the uh, website that uh, clearly define how if you want to have a consultation, how you sign up for it, and how it works, and makes the onboarding pretty simple. And then I'm seeing here on Amazon. Um, in addition to that, you have the book. So mm -hmm. if people are just big chickens, they can start out by um, by getting your book on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Steve, it's a little bit of the book is focused on something that is to a little bit of a different audience. I would encourage entrepreneurs to read it because I think it's it might be a bit of an inspirational story in that the theme of the book is how to build a sustainable venture ecosystem in an unexpected place, which clearly... Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas is. But we wrote the book because 10 to 12 years into this process from inception, we realized that there's a lot of smaller communities, not the usual places you would expect on the coast or, or Austin, that if they take their economic destiny into their own hands, we can give them some tools and some inspiration for how they can build a vibrant startup and small business climate. And so it talks about things like how to get the talent going and how to think about entrepreneurial talent, some of the tools associated with that. It talks about capital formation, the fact that you need capital sources of all types, debt and equity from angel stage all the way through private equity. It talks about the importance of being event driven and having a regular cadence of events to reinforce uh, that entrepreneurial spirit and make people believe it's possible. And then it's kind of an all hands on deck community engagement as well, as well, where the municipality, the county, the local colleges and universities, the flagship enterprises have a role to play as well. And, and then beyond just the inspiration, the storytelling, how we did it, we've got a, a venture ecosystem building canvas that's in there as well that gives you the ability to do a gap assessment and to figure out where you are. And then you start at that point of where you are and you figure out what's the art unique uh, assets, what are our aspirations and what are our constraints? And then you can kind of do what we did and just start putting the pieces together uh, one at a time. I also say that the book is a starting point, but if you think about how long Silicon Valley has been around, 75 years now from the time that Major General Draper came back and thought that was a different way to fund uh, early stage innovative businesses and, and how to do all that, we're 15, 20 years into this. We still have a long way to go to get ultimately to any kind of maturity. For small areas, they should they should start now. I mean, if they haven't already got something like this going, because it'll pay real dividends and it's way different than the classic, we're going to hope to buy lottery tickets and attract a bunch of big businesses in with plants and employment. This allows you to take advantage of the talent, and the, the local capability you have and do it on your own. I love that. Well, give us the uh, URL for people to uh, start engaging with you. Yeah, yeah. The URL is is startupjunkie.org. Feel free to reach out. That's the best place to start. You have access to myself and the whole team there. 
And uh, and we'd love it. We, we'd love to talk to anybody that wants to talk to us. So before I let you go, um, just give people that really feel like, you know, they can't quite get the engine going with their startup company, that there is hope. Now, there's hope. It's a long grind. I mean, I've been through the process nine times and it didn't always work. And there were some dark days and a lot of times you felt alone. And in those days, there was there wasn't all the support mechanisms that were there. But if you spend the time looking out to the peer groups that are there, to groups like ours, the entrepreneurial support organizations, to all the state and local resources, everybody wants you to be successful in that small business or that startup. So don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Use the resources that are available. And if this particular idea or concept doesn't work out, sometimes they don't. You've given it your best. You're not done. You just take all that potential failure as feedback and get on to the next thing and take all that collective learning and be better the next time out. It's it's a it's a hard process. It's not for everybody, but it's also not impossible. And a lot of people out there, groups like ours, want to see startups and small business be successful. It's the lifeblood of the U.S. economy. It is a movement that can change the world more so than any government ever could. So if 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 you if you have what it takes, a lot of people don't realize they do, you're going to regret not taking the chance and trying something. So just keep after it. I'd say that's the bottom line. I love it. And again, it's startupjunkies.org. That's it. All right. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you. The ecosystem that we create in our company can be so powerful. It can give everybody in the company an opportunity to help really join in the revolution of the company, the putting the company on the express train to success, um, but also just having it be a really great and really cool place to work. And so I hope that you've thought a little bit about your company and the kind of things that are in that and how you can create a really cool ecosystem within your company and live as a thriving entrepreneur. We're going to take our first commercial break and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best-selling author of multiple books, and I help people write publish and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best-selling authors. And you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself, and tell you I know the world is waiting on your message, and I would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskStevekid.com and schedule a time to talk today. for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today as we talk about express success. What are the things that you can do to fast track your success? What are the things that you should do to get you the best start in life or uh, in your business? And what are the kind of things that you can do once the business is started in your business to really uh, up or amp up even if you will the success in your business? What is express success. We talked about that in the first segment about the ecosystem that you can create um, in your company. And now we want to talk a little bit about uh, preparing yourself to go out into the world and how can you maybe uh, make your college experience quicker, better, faster and help you be on the train to express success. With that said, Let's jump in to our next guest. Join me in welcoming Andrew Olson. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. First off, tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Yeah, so my name is Andrew Olson. I am 20 years old. 
I'm an entrepreneur that owns a few businesses and uh, works on a few others. Uh, right now, my main thing is a business called Fast Track, basically where I help students that are in high school, so 8th to 12th grade. I help them graduate college in two years instead of four, uh, which saves them anywhere from twenty dollars to $100,000 or so. And the reason I do that is because uh, when I was that age, I was not going to go to college. And then I found out that a thing called dual credit classes were a possibility. So dual credit classes where you take a class in high school that counts for both high school and college credits. And it's usually around $25 to $50 per credit hour, whereas most colleges are going to be, you know, 10 to 15 times that price uh, if you take it at the actual campus. So I found out about that and decided that I would go to college and uh, got my degree done in two years instead of four. So basically now I just tell people to do the same thing. So did you start at that um, right in on your freshman year or when do you suggest to folks in high school start doing that? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, the best time to start is as early as possible. Uh, obviously people are gonna have access to different things at different times. Uh, I didn't even know that it was really a possibility until uh, the second semester of my sophomore year of high school. And I took one class when I was a sophomore in my uh, final semester. And then when I was a junior is when I took a lot of them. Uh, to answer your question directly though, uh, obviously earlier is better. Uh, usually freshman or sophomore is the best to start. Like had I, if I could go back in time and redo what I did, I would have taken basically a whole year worth of uh, dual credit classes when I was a sophomore instead of just taking the one. And the, one, the only reason I didn't do that is because I didn't know about it until then. But yeah, it is possible to start basically when you're a sophomore, but you could take a cup when you're a freshman as well. So do you then go to um, uh, like a community college or like a local college and take those classes on their campus? Or is it uh, remote type of stuff? Or how specifically does it work out where you where you're taking the classes? Yeah, so it's a combination. So I want to say that about half of mine were online and half of them were in person. Um, so depending on where you grow up at, uh, my town happened to have quite a few local community college or like tech schools. Um, so we had a plethora of options available for us. So you could either take a class that was offered on their campus in person and you could go there usually it was twice a week or sometimes three times a week for an hour or you could take the same class that's offered for the same institution and you could take it on online and then it's just complete the work at your own pace uh, there's also opportunities if you are in a town that has no community colleges or no tech schools or anything like that that offer these classes uh, you can just take them directly online remotely from another institution. That's awesome. So, I mean, how much is possible? I mean, could you take your whole college or is two years pretty much the max you can get or how much could you do? Uh, so there, I, I'm not going to say there's like a limit on how much you could get done because a lot of these classes count for both high school and college. So, the, the real limiting factor is that you obviously have to still complete your high school degree. And at some point, some of them maybe wouldn't count for high school credit. Like if you're going to take maybe like a computer science class as an elective uh, dual credit class, and it's going to get counted in your, as your, in your college degree as an elective, that's not going to really count as any major specific anything in high school. It's not going to count as like an English class. So that's like one drawback is like you're not going to be able to take you know, you couldn't take 120 credits worth of dual credits in high school necessarily because of that, because you still have to fulfill your high school requirements. And then the other caveat is that um, in order to transfer these credits to your college you're going to, some colleges only accept 60, some accept 90. Um, so that's why I say two years. So like two years is if you start with us when you're a freshman or a sophomore or maybe even a junior, I can guarantee that we can save you two years. Um, beyond two years, I can't guarantee it just because certain colleges only accept 60 as transfer credits. Uh, some of them accept 90, like I said, but some of them only accept 60. So I can't guarantee that I can save you two and a half years when, you know, half of those credits won't even count then. So yeah, two years is, I'm not going to say it's the limit, but two years is a, a really good start. I think you could probably get two and a half 
three done if you really push it and if you plan correctly and know that the college you're going to go to uh, accepts extra as well. Love that. So, I mean, other than, of course, a person just needs to work with you, is there a list somewhere? I mean, do all guidance counselors know about this and just nobody knows to ask? Or, you know, how how would a person even know what classes they can take and and that kind of thing? Yeah, that's a good question. So that's like where we do a lot of the legwork is finding out these things for you. So like in my situation, for example, um, I didn't know about it. How many people knew about it? Um, it just kind of depends on your high school. So some high schools are going to be really receptive of it and they're going to teach their guidance counselors to support it and really push it on students and tell students it's a good idea. It's going to save them a bunch of money. It's going to get them ahead in their career. And then some schools will tell guidance counselors to do that and the guidance counselor just won't do their job because it's more work for them. And then other schools just don't know about it or don't want to encourage it. So it's really just like a school to school basis. So that's why I'm doing this is just kind of get the word out there, um, get as many people taking advantage of this as possible. And then well, also to answer your question of like, if if it is not now, if you're listening to this interview, obviously, you know, it's a possibility. Um, if you want to find more information, obviously you can contact us. And if you don't need to contact us, another way you is you could just like look up your, say you go to whatever, whatever high school, you just type in the high school name you go to and then type in dual credit after it and see if anything comes up. If nothing comes up on the internet, which it usually will, if there are some opportunities, because the college is going to have some sort of um, HTML page about it. But if nothing comes up, then next step would be ask the counselor at your school who deals with scheduling uh, if there are any dual credit opportunities or dual enrollment opportunities, sometimes they'll call it. Sometimes high schools will have their own name for it like future, whatever success, or, you know, they'll have some acronym for it. And then, yeah, third step, if, if they don't say anything, would be reach out to um, a, a service like us, or I'm sure there's, there's others as well that can do the research for you. Well, speaking of that, um, talk to us about who can get in contact with you. Uh, you know, kind of what does it cost to work with you and, and, and where can they go to connect with you? Yeah. So uh, anyone with anyone who's either in eighth to 12th grade or is a parent of an eighth to 12th grader or knows somebody who has a kid who's in eighth to 12th grade uh, can contact us. They can go to our website, which is just www.fasttrack.school. And right on the front page is kind of a video of me explaining things. And then just a, a button where you'll be able to book a free session with us and we'll see if it's a good fit. Uh, you can also just shoot me a text or an email as well. Um, that are, that's also on our website. And uh, as far as the pricing goes, right now it's $1,000. Um, so you pay $1,000. Um, if we're a good fit, if we accept you into the program, basically you pay 1000 uh, because we're not going to just accept everyone. Uh, we want to make sure that we can actually help you because we also have a money back guarantee of 100%. So if like you come to us and your your child's a senior and they have your senior in high school and it's their last semester and their schedule's already planned, there's really not a whole lot we can do to help them get in dual credit classes. Um, so we're not going like, to take your money for no reason if we can't help. Um, so it's a thousand dollars. You would that includes like one on one coaching with me. Uh, going through the whole process of like how I did it and how it applies to your situation. And it's really like a specialized focused thing on what your goals are to get out of college and like what classes you should be taking as dual credits to kind of decide what your interests are. So you can pursue a college major that you're actually interested in. And then it, that's also includes the whole schedule building process. So we do the whole thing for you where you just tell us what high school you go to, how old you are, what your interests are. And then we go ahead and figure out the course requirements for your high school and the major requirements. And then we go and build out the whole high school schedule for you. And give us that URL again. Yeah, it's just fasttrack.school. I love that. Well, uh, you know, give us some idea just how real this can be for, I mean, is there anybody that, that, 
you've ever found that can't do it? I mean, I know you gave the example of at the end of your senior year, but just as far as um, are there any districts or anything that you've ran into where they just don't allow it or any of that kind of thing? Um, no, I haven't run into anything where they're where you're simply not allowed to do it. Um, certain states and high schools might be a little bit more strict on how many you can do and what your GPA has to be to, in order to do them. But I've never seen like a hard line. No, you can't do this. All right. Well, um, give us an idea how long that process takes for you to, you know, once you accept them, uh, you know, to get them a, a plan for what they're going to do. Yeah, so it's more of like an ongoing thing. Um, but uh, we do, like when you work with us, we make sure that we get you your schedule before the next like switch of terms, basically. So like if the term switches and in, in after Christmas break or whatever, and you sign up with us two days before Christmas break, we're going to make sure that you get your next schedule to get enrolled in those classes uh, as soon as possible so that you can get into them and you don't have to wait an extra semester to get started. Um, so we, we do the schedule and whatever time frame is necessary to give you enough time to sign up for the classes uh, as a guarantee. And then as far as like the working with us and kind of going through the interest and in like how things are going, that's just an ongoing conversation with me and all the clients. And you're allowed to, to book a call whenever, whenever you think you need help. And um, yeah, it's more of just like an ongoing process basically. But the turnaround time can be as soon as two days, or it can be, you know, a month down the line. There's no reason to to cram it in early. Uh, we're not going to just do it as fast as possible for no reason. We're going to really make sure we get you in the right things as long as it doesn't mess with any deadlines or anything. Do go to FastTrack.school and check out Andrew. Andrew, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Two years to get through college instead of four. That sounds like a great plan to have express success and to get into the things that you're really meant to do in this world quicker, sooner, faster, and probably even better while you're still young and you've got all that energy. I used to always tell my kids, you know, the time to work really super hard and spend a lot of hours is when you're young and you have the energy for it versus coming towards the end of your life or you know when you're in your 50s or your 60s and you're a little more run down and your body doesn't work quite as well as it did when it was 20 um, and now you have to try to be able to work twice as hard to make up, keep up, to get the things that you want in life. And that is one of the big tricks to express success. And I hope you got some really good tips in that. If not for yourself, maybe for your kids. We are gonna take another commercial break and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best-selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best-selling authors, and you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself, and tell you, I know the world is waiting on your message, and I would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskStevekid.com and schedule a time to talk today. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today as we talk about express success. What are the kind of things that you can be on the express train to success? How can you say success several times and see if you don't sound like you have the lisp? Um, <laughs> what can you do to expedite your own personal life and get to the places that you need to be, should be, want to be a little sooner, quicker, faster 
um, more powerfully, more effectively, more impactfully, uh, what are the kind of things that you can do to really make that happen, to make you experience, express success? Um, I hope that you've gotten some good tips from our first guests, you know, both talking about entrepreneurial ecosystems as well as talking about taking college and, and having it actually take you only two years to get through it instead of four. Um, and now we've got one more guest and we want to talk a little bit about um, how you can grow your company and how you can actually experience rapid growth with your company so that you can live as a thriving entrepreneur and you can experience express success. With that said, let's jump in to our next guest. Join me in welcoming Julia Arpag. Hey, Julia, how are you doing today? Hi, Steve. I'm good. It's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so good to have you here with us. Start us off by telling us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. I would love to. Thank you. Um, I show up in the world as a CEO and co-founder of Aligned Recruitment, which is a boutique tech recruitment company where we work with startups, entrepreneurs, founders, and we help them grow their teams. So um, you work with mostly tech companies. Is there a certain size of tech companies that you like best to work with? Or um, yeah. yeah, yes, good question. So we work mostly with small companies. So the ones that are just starting out and are in kind of the five to 10 employee range. Um, and then all the way up to our largest client right now is about 200 people. So those those small to mid-sized companies is typically our sweet spot. I love that. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of uh, specific type of tip tech company that you prefer working with over others? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I would say it's not so much about the type of company, it's about the type of partnership. So we're not the kind of recruitment firm that just throws resumes at you and hopes for the best. We are embedded, which means we work with you as if we're internal. We typically brand as whatever company we're partnered with. We get to know all the executive leaders or at least the hiring team. Um, we're, we're intricately involved in the whole recruitment process from beginning to end. So any tech company that wants to work with a partner like that and not just have resumes thrown at them, that's a good fit. Um, and anyone that doesn't obviously wouldn't then be a good fit, but that's the way that we operate. And that's how our clients like to work with us. And as you said, you're a, you're a new company, but things are really uh, going gangbusters with you. So let's start off from, um, you know, you say you bootstrapped it. Um, how desperately uh, bootstrapped did you start off? <laughs> I love that question, Steve. Um, yeah, we've never taken funding. Our plan is that we never will um, because we've been able to, to hit the ground running. So we've only been around for about six months, but we're already working with seven clients and we have contracts out with several more and, and anticipating them signing pretty soon here. Um, we're, I would describe it as desperately bootstrapping, but I would say that our commitment has been to be profitable from day one, which we have been, I'm very proud to say. Um, and a lot of it is because my co-founder and I have both worked in the recruitment industry for several years. So we've already had a ton of great contacts and a lot of really good clients that we've connected with in the past. And so when they heard that we were going out on our own, a lot of them came to us and said, Hey, we know your work ethic. We know that you guys are phenomenal at what you do. So we'd like to work with you. Always nice when people tell you right up front, I want to work with you, start your own company so you can do it. <laughs> right? It's a huge compliment. Yeah. The the backstory there is that I was laid off uh, five weeks after my son was born and I got six job offers within two weeks and several of them have now become my clients because I, I thought to myself, how can I say yes to all of you? So that's a lot of kind of where the idea for aligned recruitment came from. I'd been thinking about going out on my own for a while. And then when I saw just the crazy amount of opportunity that we had before us, I, I thought now's the time. I love that. I mean, especially in, in the face of so many offers to have the courage, the willingness, whatever, you know, to go out on your own, you know, and I mean, granted, you had a few people come with you, but still, you know, no promises, but I'm going to do this myself. That's amazing. That's really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, it, it felt like the right moment. I knew, yes, you're right. Nothing's ever guaranteed as an entrepreneur, but honestly, my, my layoff taught me that nothing's ever guaranteed 
when you're internal either. So really it gave me the chance to say like, okay, if I'm going to bet on anyone, I'd rather bet on myself. So that's why we made the, made the leap. I love that. So what are some of the things when it comes to a tech company wanting to hire people that you really, really, really wish they knew and they just never seem to know? Um, well, I kind of like that they don't know them because then it makes, it makes them want to work with someone like us, but where, where we do see some, some tech founders and, and, uh, leaders struggling is that this isn't their expertise, right? Like they started their company because they had a vision for a very specific tech product or they're in custom software development or, you know, they, they provide some kind of service that just isn't recruitment. So they don't really know the world of talent acquisition, which is appropriate. Like they shouldn't, that's not their job. So where we come in and where we're able to consult is on, I mean, first of all, figure out what job you actually need to hire for. We have had some clients come to us who have said, I know I need a new, let's say a new sales manager, but through the conversation with them, we've realized you actually also need a new operations manager because these responsibilities that are falling on you are slowing down your revenue production and your growth. And these are some ways that you can actually map out your talent strategy so that you can build revenue at the company um, and, and kind of grow in the direction that you want to grow in. So that's one thing that our clients come to us for is kind of helping them figure out what to hire. And then once we've helped them discern that, we actually build out the process for them. Um, typically, they have a sense of who they'd want to interview the candidates from their team, but we're able to help them break it down so there's not tons and tons of interviews. It just burns candidates out if there's five, six steps in the process. So as often as possible, we try to keep the process to three steps um, so that they can do panel interviews or do take-home assessments or something to make sure that the interviewers can get as much information as they need without the candidates being like, oh my God, I don't want to keep moving forward with this anymore. So um, those are two ways that we're really able to add value in, and two areas that I see that typically our clients just don't have experience in that we're happy to, to provide value in. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I mean, I love the concept of recruiting. Um, I've kind of always been on the other side where I'm like the person you're sending the recruits to. Um, mm -hmm. So no competition, don't worry about it. Uh, plus, I don't do that anymore because I burnt out on it. But that's a whole nother whole nother uh, radio oh show. Oh my gosh, I was going to um, say we should do a new podcast where you tell me your story. That sounds so interesting. Yeah, but um, you know, one thing I do know is that you really have to have a methodology for what you're going to do, um, a process, a system, whatever you want to do before you start into. And I think that's one of the things that I've noticed the most is, is that people just say, okay, I need so-and-so in, and then they just kind of like are expecting magic to show up or something when it comes to, you know, I'm going to get these resumes and then just magically one of them is going to float out of the pile and, you know, sing songs to me and tell me that they're the one I want to recruit versus having a plan going ahead. Do you, do you know what I mean? I do. I do know what you mean. Yeah. So that's what's so helpful about baking out like what exactly you do need the interview process to look like. How will you vet out who's the right candidate for you, knowing that the resume won't sing to you from the pile, like you said. One of our, our clients, actually, they do a one minute recorded um, interview so they can kind of get a sense of the, the candidate before they move them to the interview process. So things like that, if they work for your organization, I think there are really good ways that you can make it more efficient and really get a better sense of who someone is beyond what their resume looks like. So I love um, creative ideas like that that we've been able to implement and, and see done at various clients of ours. I will even tell people who are on the other side of the fence working with you because they got to work with you in order to get this free tip, but I'll give it to you on the radio and then hopefully they'll still work with you. <laughs> um, but if you have company information that everybody needs to know, don't do, I mean, don't do a cattle call, but do. So in other words, get the top 10, the top 20, the top 50, whatever, depends on how many resumes you get, get them all in a room and tell them all the stuff you're going to say a hundred times over, tell them all of that at once. And most importantly, or else it won't work. You got to shine them a vision of who the company is and where it's going. Um, mm -hmm. And then go to, you know, one-on-ones and other types of things. But, um, you know, from somebody who's done all of those 
you know, one at a time, 50 times over, uh, save yourself some brain damage and, and do some of that stuff in group and then meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. So there you go. There's my free other side of the coin tip. What about you? What is your one tip for getting ready to be able to bring on your next or your first new person in your team? Oh, I love that question. I think it's actually similar to what you just said is really getting clear on what your company's vision is. Where are you going? Like, what are you looking to accomplish with this hire specifically? And also, what are you looking to accomplish as a company? Not only because that'll help you sell the opportunity to your candidate, but also so you can have a really clear vision as you go through the recruitment process and as you build your company in general for why are we doing this? Where are we going? What are we hoping will come of this? Just so that you're you're all aligned on that North Star, both as an internal team and as you bring in new hires. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about your company. I mean, besides the fact that it's awesome and it's growing quick and you've got exactly what people want, um, what is, and maybe I already said it, but you can repeat that if you want to, um, what is the thing that really differentiates you from other hiring and recruiting firms? Oh, thank you for asking that, Steve. Our big differentiator is really that white glove service. Like I mentioned earlier, the fact that we fully embed with our clients, we brand as them, we get to know them intimately. We have weekly syncs with them to make sure that we stay on the right page throughout the whole recruitment process. And we offer different ways of working with us. So one option is you can work with us on a retainer model where you pay up front. We work on as many or as few roles at a time as you'd like. And then when you fill one, you just slot in another one. And we keep working with you on that retainer basis for as long as you need us to. And then the other option is contingent where you just choose to pay us a, a percentage of the salary of the recruit that we bring on board. And you do that at the point at which we close the role. That one obviously tends to be more expensive and you get less of that embedded support. Um, but we, we offer different options for our clients because we do want to be flexible. We want to meet them where they are. And again, our goal is to help them build their vision, not just to throw candidates at them. Um, so that's really what's so different about us. Mm, I love that. I love that you keep bringing up vision and, and those kind of things, because I think a lot of times it becomes a little bit too um, mechanical, if that's the right word, mm -hmm. when we when we get into the, the recruiting process and we kind of miss that whole purpose and vision. So I, I dig that. That's cool. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, that's huge for us. That's why we get so integrated with our clients, because we want to be able to pitch that vision to the candidates and speak as knowledgeably as as if we worked internally with our clients. So yeah, that's that's huge for us. I'm glad that you picked up on that. Thanks for flagging that. So of course, the most important of all questions, um, you identified the who, but how would they get a hold of you to be able to work with you? I love that question. Thank you for asking. Um, so the best way, we actually just did a website refresh, which I'm super excited about, literally as of today. Um, so they can find us at alignedrecruitment.com or find me on LinkedIn. I post every day. My name is Julia Arpag. My last name is A-R-P-A-G. Um, I joke all the time. Before I got married, my last name was Stack, which never confuse people and I never had a spell. Um, and then my my lovely married name has been very different, but you can look me up, Julia Arpag on LinkedIn um, and happy to connect with you. Just shoot me a DM or go ahead and contact us on our website and we'll get in touch and we'll chat about your hiring needs. And give us that URL one more time. It's alignedrecruitment.com. Perfect. I love that. Well, before I let you go, just one last thing, and that's give us a vision of how easy and powerful the recruiting process can be for your tech company. Oh, I love that question. To answer that, I'll point to one of our clients who we've literally hired six software engineers for them in just four months. It doesn't need to be super long and drawn out. Once we're aligned on your vision, the kind of candidate you're looking for, the skill set that you need, we can make it happen really fast. We have fantastic senior level tech recruiters here, and we'll walk with you every step of the way until your hire is made. Perfect. I love that. Well, Julia, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Thank you, Steve. Such a pleasure. I love hearing success stories, especially the ones of companies that really had expressed success. You know, they started off 
Um, and, and I love this one because, you know, she bootstrapped to the beginning of it. And a lot of us have been in that place where we started off with next to nothing uh, but a big dream. And we knew what we needed to do. And we really then jumped deeply into it and made the difference um, and begin to see really good, quick growth what we're doing. I love sharing stories like that, and it's really cool. And, of course, you know, Julie would be a company you could go to if you need help with the recruiting for your company uh, to be able to have your company be all that it could be as you do all the things that you need to do to be a thriving entrepreneur. We're going to take one more commercial break, and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write publish and market their books and now they're best-selling authors and you're next i just wanted to come on for a minute say hi to you tell you a little bit about me introduce myself and tell you i know the world is waiting on your message and i would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world go to asksteamkid.com and schedule a time to talk today listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today, we've been talking about express success. What are some of the fast tracks? What are some of the ways that we can get there, maybe quicker, sooner, faster, to the thing that we're meant to do in this life, to be able to really not just thrive, but really make the difference that only we can make and do it in the express lane? Uh, you know, have you ever been on a highway and you're driving all by yourself, so you're not eligible for the express line, you know what I'm talking about? And you're looking over there and they're zipping by and traffic's not moving where you are. Uh, yeah, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can feel that way sometimes in business too. Like things are zipping past you and you really, really wish that things could happen a little bit quicker, sooner, faster. And here are some things that we shared with you today that are the express to success. And I hope you will take them and you will thrive in all that you do in your life and business. Because remember, you are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose, and the world needs you. I hope you know, and I hope you've heard, not just as commercials, but the spirit of my heart inside, to know that I'm here to help you any way that I possibly can to live every day of your life as a thriving entrepreneur. I believe in you. I'm excited to hear about your successes in life. Always feel free to uh, hashtag thriving entrepreneur on any of the social medias. I love reading them and seeing what you're up to. I hope that you are on the train to express success in your life. And then until we're together again next time, that you're happy, safe, warm, and loved. And you have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. Hi, my name is Steve Kidd. I am a third generation minister, an international best selling author of multiple books, and I help people write, publish, and market their books to bestseller. In fact, there are literally thousands of people that have used the system that I created to be able to write, publish, and market their books, and now they're best selling authors, and you're next. I just wanted to come on for a minute, say hi to you, tell you a little bit about me, introduce myself, and tell you. I know the world is waiting on your message 
And I would be so honored to be part of sharing your message with the world. Go to AskSteveKid.com and schedule a time to talk today.